to talk about it in terms of both the dangers that it poses to the people who are the recipient of kind of barbaric, truly barbaric behavior. And, and I try to make sure that people can see it for what it is because it's happening often with alcohol in the middle of the night in wooded, dark places where people don't talk about we it. We just had an incident here at Cal State Northridge. Yes. Where a pledge died on hike. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, but to also talk about the moral erosion of the person doing the music. That every time you are, you are cruel to another human being, you surrender a part of yourself that you will never get back. The questions that parents would ask, how do they tell you? What, what, what is the first thing you did when somebody says your baby is dead? Um, how, when did you see the body which they had because they saw pictures of it? Which was also incredibly cruel in my estimation. Um, you know, um, why is it that the police did it knock on the door of every apartment in that complex to see if someone was missing a child? Because they knew there was a dead child in, in, on the grass between the houses. Um, why do you show up to show the father bloody pictures of his son for him to identify him with blood streaming out of his mouth? To, you know, I, 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 it was just, I, there were basic questions. Did, did he have a wallet? Did it have his ID in it? Did, did he have a cell phone, which all kids have cell phone? And it was clear from the police where he was talking about it. And I asked, you know, the question, as, as it occurred to me, with my kids, my name is not in their phone. If I call, it says, Dad, if my, my ex-wife calls and says, Mom, how does your name show up in his phone? She said, Mom. And so I asked, so you were calling that phone all night, which was in police custody, and kept saying, Mom, and nobody answered. Um, and so I just wrote about the pain of the experience of losing a child, and how that is every parent's worst nightmare that, you, that they go out of the house for whatever errand or playing or hanging out with friends and they never come home. Uh, and I think that there's a universal dread in that. To be human, but different ways to be human, that it is a spectrum and that people exist at different points along that spectrum and some people are fixed and other people are fluid and, and they change based on circumstance and who they meet and who they love and, and the dynamics that happen, the magic between a person and another person, that challenges the binary. Your, your very existence is radical because it requires you to work, right? Um, and people don't want to do that work and therefore you have men who real, and women who realize that people don't even want to acknowledge your truth as you are telling them your truth, right? You, you are, I, 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 that's I, I can see you, I can see you editing what I say as I say, right? Uh, so that, so that, you know, and, and my response is always, this is a statement of fact, I'm actually not soliciting your opinion. Right. <laughs> <laughs> See, part of the heteronormative aspect of uh, uh, identity is the default and the truth. And everything else is subordinate to that. And I think you have to reorient that and say, no, it's just, it's just different. Um, 
But I think uh, people who are in the middle suffer from a kind of monosexism that you are either this exclusively or that exclusively. And if you're somewhere in the middle, you can catch it from both directions. The spike being biracial. It is exactly. I mean, one thing you will recall, I compare it to this, which is uh, particularly pre civil rights. Very prominent in culture, in literature, and in film was the idea of passing. That people who were biracial who could pass for white often did so that they could experience white privilege. I think that that happens on the spectrum, sexual spectrum as well. Many people who are uh, bisexual but can pass as heterosexual do so in order to experience heterosexual privilege regardless of the psychic damage it does to this both soul and the spirit not to simply stand up in yourself and to be yourself right and and if, if, the, if the gay rights movement has taught the world anything it is the importance of simply being visible and saying I won't bend I won't hide I will stand in my, in the singular position that I call me. Hi, this is Tika Lark Fleming inviting you to join me every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for MP Chronicle Presents The Black Girl Show. Join us as we discuss politics, pop culture, and the other side of Black LA. So don't forget to tune in to MP Chronicle Presents The Black Girl Show every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, exclusively on latalklive.com.